In this video, I show you the Creality Falcon 10 watt laser. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGG is for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of August of 2022, we have this printed and painted small cottage from City of Furwood. We have two all-in pledges for the Unchained Games 3D printable coins. We have this laser actually going to one of my Patreon supporters. And $100 to go towards a crowdfunding campaign, which my Patreon supporters are voting upon. If you want to get in on that, go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page, where you can find out all of the details. If you haven't seen my previous video where I show you the reasons why I chose a Chinese 50 watt laser over a Glowforge, make sure to check out this video. And I go through a lot of the reasons for why a hobbyist might want to get a laser. But that setup cost me a total of about $2,500. So it's not a cheap investment. And I made a lot of upgrades. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna do a sort of a compare and contrast between my CO2 laser versus this much more manageable, smaller, laser uh, and it's actually a diode laser which is different from a co2 laser but before we get into some of those differences and comparisons i do want to share about this in particular so creality did send me this laser to be able to review and at the moment of this video posting it is going to be made available here in North America. So use the links below because I do have a discount for my viewers who are interested in getting this for quite a bit off. So make sure to check that out as well. But overall, I think this is going to retail for a little over $500. So the big question is going to be, is that worth it to buy this laser over some of the other ones? I think the five watt version of this laser is about $330. So is it worth sort of the bump up uh, to have twice as much power in the diode laser? Well, first off, this came in a relatively small box. And if you have ever put together a 3D printer, if you own th Creality's uh, Ender 3 or Ender 5, Building this is going to be no problem. It's relatively easy. And in fact, the hardest thing about it is making sure that you have these belts tightened correctly so that this can go back and forth the way that it's supposed to. But I put this together in about half an hour. So it was very, very easy to put together. And actually the box that it comes in is pretty small, especially if you compare it to a 3D printer. So once I put it together, I did put it through its paces. And in particular, I do a test to see how much power and how much speed I need in order to be able to cut as well as engrave. And these diode machines are primarily made for engraving, but I am surprised at how easily this cuts material, cuts wood. So the wood that I primarily used is a little bit shy of three millimeters and the sample pieces of wood that they give you is two millimeters. So as long as you're cutting about that much, um, it's going to be, you're going to be able to cut it actually in one pass, which surprised me. Now I did have to, um, in order to get rid of some of these burn marks that I received, I did choose to do half of the power at 50%, but going more than one pass in order to make the cuts. And that way you avoid some of the burn marks. And that's one of the first things that I want to say that's different between a diode laser and a CO2 laser is that my CO2 machine does have what's called air assist, which is basically just air blowing right on the spot where the laser is cutting. And what that does is it decreases the burn marks because any flare ups that you're going to have the air actually puts it out. So obviously the diode lasers don't have air assist and I do think that makes a difference. Now one of the things that I found out while I was uh, experimenting and cutting is interestingly enough the side that you choose to laser uh, determines how much scarring or burning that you're going to have. And so for some reason uh, the more finished side burned up more than the unfinished side of the plywood that I have. And this plywood I just bought uh, very cheaply at Home Depot, but I know that you can get higher quality plywood out there. Or you can choose to use MDF, which is also a super cheap option. Now, I didn't try cutting on my MDF because my MDF is a little bit thicker, but I'm confident that you're going to be able to cut through uh, almost 
twice as thick. In fact, um, the spec sheets for this laser said that you can cut up to eight inches, making three passes. So I am, after experimenting and seeing this, I am relatively confident that that can happen. After I did laser out these test pieces, I went ahead and tried to cut this dice box but as you can see here, there was a ton of flare-ups and burn marks. And I should have flipped it over and uh, burned it on the unfinished side because that, for whatever reason, seems to be less flammable than this side. I'm not 100% sure. And also, these pieces didn't end up being able to punch through. So it didn't cut all the way through. So I made modifications and was able to make this circular version. And by the way, a lot of these designs that you see here are files, laser files from Zykit, someone that I have done a number of review videos predominantly for his 3D printed products, STL files. But if you do want laser files, go ahead and check out the link below because he has some really interesting projects and this is where I got uh, both this cross as well as these dice boxes, which I think look super cool. And here is an example of the etching that you can do. This is my daughter and I think it turned out super cool. I do think that I need to tone down the burn power on this because it's slightly overburned. But as you can see, I think this is a great sample of the kind of etching and the detail and the quality that you can have. And there's a ton of videos out there that show you how to convert your uh, JPEGs into sort of these dithering spots because it has to convert a sort of gradation into almost like what the old style dot matrix printers are. Tons of tutorials on how to do that. And I highly, highly suggest that you use the light burn software. And it comes with this laser, but it's just the trial period. I think you have a month. It is, last I saw, it was $80, at least when I purchased it. It's well worth the cost of getting light burn because it is so easy to use. Uh, walks you through all of these processes and a lot of the tutorials that you're going to find assumes that you have Lightburn as the software for running the laser. You're going to get a trial version of it, but you're also going to get a free option that's on the little jump drive that you're going to get. And the interface with this is a micro SD card. And that's really what I used to pull files off of my computer, stick it in here, and without needing to hook up my computer to this machine, it is able to make all of these files. Now, if I were to keep this machine and use it long term, I would definitely get a USB-C cable hooked up to my laptop so that I'm not running back and forth and inserting the micro SD card back and forth. Or if I was going to stick with the micro SD card, I would definitely get an adapter from micro SD to a regular SD card size, just because you're gonna eventually wear out this insert for the micro SD card. But it's much more convenient, I think, if you're able to hook up your laptop to this machine, and that way you can just print directly from your computer without having to transfer all the files through the SD card. There isn't any wireless option, and so you're not gonna be able to do that in the same way that you can for some 3D printers. But overall, I think it's relatively uh, simple to be able to transfer uh, those files over onto here, which I'm thankful for. Also, I just want to make sure that you definitely want to be taking this outside. You do not want to laser anything indoors because the fumes are going to go everywhere. With my CO2 laser, I created this elaborate exhaust system. But even then, I have fumes that remain and I need to clear out my basement every once in a while, especially when I am cutting acrylic. So I uh, cut all of these pieces out in my garage as well as in my backyard. And that's really handy too because this is so portable as opposed to my CO2 laser, which you really don't want to be moving around that much. Uh, this one I can just pick up with one hand, take it to the garage or set it up outside. So it's super easy. And right here I do have a honeycomb and I just pulled this out from my CO2 laser. Again, if I were to keep this laser, I would get a dedicated one that's more 400 by 400 millimeters, which is the size. And that is another comparison is the size of the print. My CO2 laser print bed size is 300 by 500 millimeters, whereas this is 400 by 400. So it's actually feels bigger because you have this larger square in which you can uh, laser engrave and cut, which actually 
feels bigger than my CO2 laser bed size. Even though dimension wise it's about the same, the fact that you're having a more of a square shape actually I feel like enables you to do larger pieces, especially circles and discs. And I think I am surprised at the ability of this tool to be able to cut material because when diode lasers first came out, I think they were more like three watts or five watts. And yes, you could cut material, but you had to do min like maybe five passes in order to be able to cut even really thin material like this uh, 2.6 millimeter wood. So I think by having higher wattage, you're able to cut thicker and thicker pieces of wood and this proves that you're able to make all the cuts that you need and even in this sort of utility box that I made to hold all the tools for this machine um, it was able to cut this relatively easily again I chose to do two passes rather than one just to avoid the burning that's around the edges but I'm just impressed at the ability of this machine to be able to make cuts. Now one big bummer about diode lasers is that they will not cut clear acrylic or this is plexiglass. I actually, I actually didn't know that and I attempted to cut and really it just scratched the surface here but it didn't cut at all. And according to the specs it looks like it can cut a black or colored acrylic or plastic but clearly it can't do clear acrylic which is sort of a bummer because with my CO2 laser I'm able to make these kind of signs and images which I think is super cool but you're not going to be able to do that with this diode laser. Also if you're going to be doing a ton of cutting which is what I primarily do uh, with my CO2 laser the thing that I've cut the most are uh, boxes for inserts for my games and they don't really re require any engraving so because of that that's why I'm not keeping this machine even though it's really good and it might have a better surface area to cut is because most of the jobs that I'm doing is primarily cutting and my CO2 laser is able to cut way faster and way cleaner than this diode laser. Now if I was doing primarily engraving projects like this then I would definitely keep this as a great option and especially an option that I can just take outside and make the engraving that I want to. Because again, right now my CO2 laser, I actually don't use it that much, especially during uh, really hot or really cold times because I do have to open up all the windows after I make my cuts just to get the extra stinkiness out of my basement. So this would be probably the greatest advantage of this is being able to just take it outside and make all of your cuts outside. You don't have to worry about making sure that you have good ventilation trying to get it out of your uh, building. Of course, again, do not make any cuts uh, inside of your house. Do not engrave inside of your house. You will totally regret it. Also, the thing that I highly encourage is regardless of what kind of laser you have, make sure you have a, a active and working fire extinguisher next to it because material can always catch on fire. We're talking about a laser for crying out loud things do catch on fire. I've never had that happen with any of my projects, but you just want to make sure you have that handy as a safety precaution. Also, Creality does include these safety glasses because it is harmful to your eyes to look at the laser while it's cutting. It's totally tempting to do that, but don't do it without eye protection. So definitely be using this. They do have this cover down here, which is magnetic, which I think is great, which uh, will cover a lot of the laser beam from you seeing it but this definitely you want to use these while you are uh, if you're going to be looking or watching it laser as it goes along. And even though it is slower because obviously a 10 watt diode is even weaker than a CO2, I'm still impressed with the speed in which all of these projects were made. Maybe it's because I'm so used to how slow 3D printing is, FDM printing is, and so any project that you're going to be using the laser with will, in comparison, will feel like it's super fast. But overall, I think this is a fantastic option. If you ever wondered or thought about getting into lasering, obviously you can make some incredible fun gifts as well as, you know, tokens for your board games. Again, I use mine primarily for inserts as well as just 
a ton of crafts. I mean, look at this cross from, again, Zykit. Uh, just the layering that happens. I, there's a whole bunch of different uh, files that you can purchase on Etsy where it's just layered art right on top of each other, just like this. Or, I mean, just check out this dice tr um, holder, which is, again, just layers and you stick the dice in here and it has holes for magnets where you can just clip this on. I have yet, I need to glue all these things together. I had to get this video out quickly and that's why I didn't have a chance to glue. I just lasered all this stuff uh, just to be able to show you the capabilities of this machine. So because of the ease of use, because you're able to take this outside, because you are able to do, I think, really cool projects that will not only enhance your gaming aids, but also will be able to make really cool gifts for your friends and for your family members. I do think that this is a good investment. This fits along some of the other crafting tools like my Cricut. I have a Cricut that is basically a cutter for like vinyl or like paper. Uh, this sort of fits in that kind of category where you're able to make some really cool stuff really handy stuff. So if you wanted to dabble into it a little bit and you didn't want to set up this huge CO2 laser or dive in you know, with thousands of dollars, I think this is a relatively safe and good investment uh, to get your hands into lasering, which is becoming more and more popular and these machines are coming down in price and becoming more and more affordable. So definitely, uh, this does receive the stamp of approval. Again, the reason why I'm not keeping it is because I already have the CO2 laser. It's super powerful, very, very quick, and I'm able to do all the stuff that I can with this machine with my CO2 laser, in addition to being able to cut acrylic as well, which again, I've made a number of gifts with that too. So if those things are priorities, then I think you might wanna look into a CO2 laser. And in a couple of months, I am going to be receiving a 40 watt desktop CO2 laser. So at that point, I'm gonna be doing a review for that. So make sure that you subscribe if you're interested in seeing a comparison between that because cost-wise, they're gonna be similar. About $500 for a desktop, a 40 watt laser versus this machine. Again, about $500, although right now, to launch things off, Creality is uh, having a sale. So make sure to check out the really good prices that are available now. So hopefully this video is helpful for you. Thank you so much for viewing. And if you're interested in other hobby or gaming projects, again, subscribe and stay tuned. Otherwise, happy lasering, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.